So it's basically um, SITUM indoor positioning. We call ourselves the GPS for indoors. So SITUM is uh, the originated as a, a, a project of three doctors in robotics from the University of Santiago in Spain. So they, they were trying to track robots in a warehouse and they, they, they didn't, they, they, weren't avail, um, they weren't able to do so with the currently available technology. So they decided to develop their own. So, um, and after 10 years in development, they decided to commercialize the solution because they realized there were many commercial applications. Uh, since 90% of the time people usually spend indoors, uh, well, basically, you know, there's different applications that decided to use it for. Um, the main problem they face is that when you want high precision to locate something indoors, uh, there's generally a large amount of infrastructure cost. This could be, I don't know, Bluetooth gateways, beacons. Uh, if anyone knows a thing or two about indoor uh, positioning, then these sort of terms may, may, may seem relevant to you. However, how did they overcome this sort of impediment at that time is and, and reach this ideal zone of, of getting high accuracy with minimum investment in infrastructure is basically by using mobile phones. Why mobile phones? Because uh, mobile phones have uh, existing inertial sensors uh, like the uh, gyroscope, uh, the accelerometer compass and are able to read the existing environmental signals like Bluetooth, Wi-Fi and other electromagnetic signals. So the, the biggest part and the most, one of the most important parts of SITOM is basically the AI algorithm uh, the founders developed that gets that multi-signal and basically uses that to position ourselves indoors. Uh, right now, there's two use cases, mainly two use cases, which is uh, wayfinding and tracking. Wayfinding we uh, generally use for um, basically gu guiding people in, in large venues, be it hospitals, be it railway stations, be it airports or shopping malls. And uh, tracking, uh, where we're able to track um, workers who are carrying the phones, like for instance, uh, security agents, maintenance workers, cleaning forces, you name it, and even uh, machinery like uh, forklifts and other sort of uh, moving machinery that, that generally gets uh, gets to do their job indoors. So there are uh, several use cases regarding this. So we do have use cases for um, forklifts and the return over investment is, is something that is uh, it's more easily defined in this sort of use cases than, than in, for instance, wayfinding, uh, because it's it's easy to to check the efficiency of the machines, how much downtime there is when we're constantly tracking them, and are able to pinpoint their location in real time and report on upon that. So we know if there's been any downtime, so companies know how to forecast the amount of machines they need to rent for the for the next year, for instance. Okay. The advantages we do provide is basically the, the precision is uh, between one and five meters. It's generally closer to one meter than to five, but we cannot guarantee it's always going to be five meters. Okay. Uh, we do work offline. Uh, that means that if we don't have data signals, the computation is done in the phone. And uh, when, <clears throat> whenever we get the signal back, we're, uh, we're uploading that into the cloud. So we, we can report on that geopositional data we have gathered in the phone. We're compatible with uh, iPhone and Android phones. However, using Android phones uh, gives us many advantages. Uh, because I don't know if you're aware of how the operational systems in the phones work, but basically uh, using Android phones above Android 5 and, and other versions different from Android 9 enables us to read the Wi-Fi signals and in the environment from a second to second basis. So this basically allows us to keep the infrastructure costs at a minimum. 
uh, if we use uh, iPhones, which is basically every time we want to provide wayfinding, we're going to have to use infrastructure. In the term, in the and by that I mean Bluetooth beacons. Bluetooth beacons. I don't know if you know what they are. It's basically like small tokens that you need to place indoors in several in different locations that emit uh, a low frequency Bluetooth signal that the phone is able to read and it uses to locate itself. However, because our technology gathers multiple signals and works through an algorithm, the amount of infrastructure you would require, or in this case, the amount of beacons you would require with SITOM is generally lower than with other providers. Our recommendation is that uh, one Bluetooth beacon, each 200 square meters uh, would be enough. Okay. Uh, since it's a SaaS solution, it's basically, it does have all the advantages associated with this kind of solution. So apart from, from the uh, cell phones and the uh, um, beacons, uh, there's no any uh, extra in investment in, in hardware. We try to keep it as battery, battery efficient as possible. We do provide in-pocket location, which enables us to uh, basically provide services for these uh, security agents I was talking before, which also gives us two extra functionalities, which is uh, one is we do have a man down alert that can be used for other purposes. So if we detect the phone is not moving, then we can kick off an alarm and act upon that or give a mobile panic button. Uh, so if you tap the phone three times, we kick off an alarm as well, which you can act upon from a control center. And we provide automatic floor detection. Uh, the mobile panic button, uh, you mentioned logistics before, uh, right? So um, we're currently working on providing a panic button for uh, truck drivers who are delivering cars who are often afraid that they may have the merchandise stolen from them. So that's an interesting project we're, we're currently developing. An automatic floor detection is a must have for anyone who wants to do indoor positioning, okay? So right now there's the use cases I've already mentioned, is tracking of our workforce and also we're able to monetize that geopositional data. So let's say, for instance, we're moving close to a shop and we want to send push notifications so we can basically define a geofence, which is an area close to that spot and uh, send up push notifications in order to attract customers to shops, stuff like that. Uh, right now, we are present in hospitals, we're airports, um, corporate buildings, factories, and even in stadiums. And uh, what I think would be relevant at this point, is not talking about much about the business model because that's something we can get into if you relevant after on. Uh, but to get into more uh, relevant stuff, like for instance, airports, do we have something here? No. So our latest reference is Aena. I don't know if anyone knows who Aina is. It's basically an airport handling company, the, the airport handling company in Spain. Okay. So what have they done? They've developed a uh, guiding app, an application that's called Aina Maps, for which they've used our own uh, interpositioning technology. Okay. So this uh, project we've done together with Telefonica, and a Spanish company named Carto DB, which is basically uh, they're providing the cartographic enrichment. But everything has been done using our indoor positioning platform and our SDKs. And I uh, recall that some of you guys basically develop yourself. So one of the huge advantages we have are the reason many companies come to talk to us is basically our software development kit kits which are free for anyone to make use of. Uh, and currently, oh, yeah, so basically do, we do have our developers page where we do have software development kits for iOS, Cordova, and uh, React Native. 
uh, and our APIs are also available with uh, code examples. So anyone who wants to use the geopositional data provided by our platform is able to do so. This right now, and I'm going very fast because I wanted to be conscious of the time. So initially, I was I was thought I was I was told I was only going to have 20 minutes. So if I, if you feel this is being rushed, just go on, let me know, and we can pinpoint anything specific and talk about that. Okay. But uh, I try to condense it, every, everything in such a way that I'm able to show you relevant things of what can be done. Uh, so we have a better understanding of, of what services we do provide right now, what can be done with, with CITOM, and all of, all of that. So basically, this is a demo environment. We've created a building from scratch. And uh, this is more oriented to uh, tracking employees in this specific use case, but it, I'm able through this case to show you other functionalities that may be relevant to your specific use cases. Uh, from what I heard is basically data analytics and uh, you could also imagine how this would work well in in an environment where you want to track uh, machinery, logistic related machinery, for instance, in an airport. Because that's also something we've potentially discussed with other uh, companies. So it's basically, uh, being able to track ground handling uh, machinery in airports, okay? So uh, generally, if you open yourself a profile on our dashboard, which is something you, you can do whenever you want because you're, we're, it's free to test, basically, what you would get is basically an, this interface right here. So if I zoom out, this is basically Google Maps, and we're able to create buildings anywhere, so I could we're talking about the elections in in the states. I don't know, could put Fifth Avenue, New York. But we could basically place a building, name it, and and create it. We've already created one building, and give it the look of a shopping mall. And once I create a building, I'm able to create floors and upload um, a floor plan, which in this case it could be PNG or JPG. So this is our uh, sort of ready out of the box solution for tracking. However, all of this is customizable. Um, by that I mean, if you make use of our software development kit, you're able to use enriched maps like we've done for the AENA project in the airport of Madrid. You're able to use 3D maps if you want. So that's up for anyone who wants to basically just use geopositional data and develop their own application. Uh, however, if you want to use this, which is simple, you can do straight straight out of the box. You upload an image, create a floor plan, and start adding adding new floors. Then you're able to add points of interest, geofences, and paths. Paths we use for uh, wayfinding. Points of interest, for instance basically locate relevant things and geofences to have specific areas we want to report on. So here we do have different areas, like cleaning room, hall A, hall B, hall B. These are polygonal and I can draw them. I don't know if I want a triangle, I'm able to do this. That's it. Okay. Um, if we go to real time, this is populated by bots. So this is no real customer data. We're not allowed to show that. But you more or less get the idea. So in the ground floor, we do have these two guys patrolling right now. If you want to focus on someone specific, we're able to do so. You get to see that this guy, one, two, three, four, five, six, is in floor zero, and so on and so forth. We're able to assign tasks and uh, report on, on everything, okay? So basically. What sort of reports are available out of the box? Basically use of building, heat maps, 
users' daytimes on geofences, displacement through geofences, and visualization of trajectories. Okay, you can also report on alarms. Uh, from this interface, we're able also to uh, manage users and devices. So this is basically the overview of, of the platform on a very high level. Um, I hope this is giving you more or less an idea of, of what we do and how we do it. Um, to focus specifically on airports, which is something Eric told me, how is AENA using our technology? So it's basically the, uh, I was looking for a video, but they haven't uh, done one up until now. Uh, we only get these screenshots of the, of the application, but you get the idea. It's basically from the app, you're able to check uh, the areas of departures, of arrivals. You're able to manage uh, the payment of the parking and uh, you're able to locate points of interest and uh, meeting points and shops, of course, and restaurants. So basically, we do provide the indoor positioning. So the routing on the blue dot would be ours. The maps, in this case, they, they, they went with the ones from Carto. And the development of the app has been done by Telefonic. Okay. So, uh, they've lately, uh, AENA, the airport handling company, has, has launched an, uh, a tender for new ideas to how to improve the service for passengers. And we're currently uh, participating with, with two new ideas with two different providers that I cannot go much into detail with because it's confidential. But uh, let's say that, I mean, anything where you can relate indoor positioning and the geopositional data uh, is of high use uh, for airports. There's one specific use case for airports I can share. I don't know if, if, if it's that uh, relevant for logistics or uh, data analytics, but uh, you can get an idea of, of how you are able to provide a, a clear return on investment in certain situations like these. It's uh, the personnel um, handling the cars and the carts in the airports. Uh, basically, the uh, in Spanish it's called PMR. That now personnel with reduced mobility. So you're able to track the person closest to the person who needs the service and guide them to the to the gate, right? So a big problem uh, airports have with airlines is whenever there's uh, delays. Airlines automatically resort to uh, saying that uh, the people in charge of, of getting the passengers of reduced mobility to the gate uh, were late. So they basically blame these guys. And up until now, without using a technology like ours, it was very difficult to audit the process and basically uh, certify, verify that this wasn't the case. So right now with interpositioning technology, you're able to say, oh no, wait a minute, this person actually was in time at the gate with the passenger, so it's not our fault. Define, you, you'll have to pay yourself, okay? Um, the last time we checked, the airports using this have been able to save a significant amount of money. Okay, Marcos, um, let me... Um... Uh, 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 well, there, there was one concern about uh, data privacy, so I wouldn't be the expert on this, but if you go to our website, uh, we do have an FAQ page that uh, specifically addresses the GDPR and how SITUM treats the data. I don't know if this had more or less answers that, that concern that was raised before. Okay, thank you uh, very much, uh, Marcos.